At first, you might not think much about a YouTuber's quest to find a mysterious cave. Just another adventure, right? But this story took a turn that no one expected. The YouTuber promised to uncover the secrets of this elusive cave, only to disappear without a trace. Now let's jump into the video and uncover the mystery behind this vanishing act. 1. Kenny Lee Veach near Las Vegas, Nevada Kenny Lee Veach, aka Snake BitMG, really thought he was onto something big when he stumbled upon this eerie M-shaped cave in the Sheep Mountains just a stone's throw from Vegas and the Hush Hush Area 51. On November 10th, 2014, ignoring every red flag and creepy warning from online folks, Kenny decided to play hero and dive back into those badlands to chase down the mysterious M Cave for the third time. Previously, he blabbed on forums about some wild vibes that hit him hard near the cave's mouth, like seriously bad juju vibes that had him bolting faster than a scared jackrabbit. Fast forward and Kenny's just vanished. Poof, gone without a trace, except for his lonely cell phone by a random mind that definitely wasn't our spooky MK. Cue the conspiracy theorists. Was it aliens, secret military tech, or did Kenny just find the ultimate escape? Whatever it was, it's been nader on any solid leads since then. Kenny, what did you get yourself into? Two, who was Kenny Lee Veach? Kenny Veach, at 47, was that daredevil solo hiker who took on the Mojave and Great Basin desserts with nothing but guts. With no GPS, compass, or even a map, this guy roamed the wilds like he owned them often just skating by on the edge of sanity. Other hikers called it reckless, but Kenny, he thrived on it. Posting under the moniker Snake Bitmji, Kenny was all about pushing limits. He once got a taste of a rattlesnake's wrath, but kept going back for more. The guy bragged about scaling mountains that others wouldn't even glance at and exploring caves that seemed straight out of horror. Despite the occasional rescue, like that time a helicopter had to scoop him up after a nasty leg injury, Kenny was unshakable. He'd recount tales of finding skulls and dodging ancient traps, all while sleeping under the stars on some forsaken peak. Driven by a fierce love for the thrill, Kenny was a true desert hawk. 3. The discovery of the M Cave in the Southern Mojave Desert In June 2014, this guy dropped a comment on a video titled Son of an Area 51 Technician. He was out hicking near Nellis Air Force Base when he stumbled across this freaky cover shaped exactly like a giant M up in the sheep range north of Vegas. As he got closer, his whole body started buzzing like a cell phone on steroids, and the vibe got so intense that he chickened out and bolted. Now, the sheep range wasn't your average stroll in the park. We're talking rugged terrain, with peaks soaring to 9,912 feet at Hayford Peak. It was a solid 10-hour trek if you wanted to check out this mysterious M Cave and make it back without turning into a popsicle. The place was notorious. Think dodgy old mine shafts, left over chemical junk from the military and some less than savory characters hanging around. Despite everyone on YouTube flipping out, doubting his story, or daring him to go back with a camera, Kenny, against all sane advice and a creepy warning, you won't get out, decided to march back into those mountains. 4. The second and third hikes to try to find the M Cave. This thrill seeker clearly didn't know when to quit. Despite previous flops, he went back to the desert, this time packing some serious heat. On October 18th, 2014, he dropped a YouTube video titled M Cave Hike, showing off as he trekked through Joe May Canyon, maybe veering into Corkscrew Canyon and near Gas Peak. But guess what? Still no cave. The haters filled his comments, calling him a phony and saying the M Cave was just a fairy tale. Not one to back down, he rallied the YouTube crowd for a third expedition, looking for brave souls to join his quest. No takers. Solo again, he told his girlfriend, Sherry and Pilgrim, that he was off to conquer the cave mystery once and for all. On November 10th, 2014, off he went, never to be seen again. It was a classic case of man versus wild. This time, the wild might just have won. 5. The Search for Kenny Kenny's girlfriend, Sherian, totally freaked out and reported him missing, sparking a massive search that's got everyone on edge. The head honcho of Red Rock Search and Rescue Dave Cummings spilled the beans to News 3 in Las Vegas. He said, We stumbled upon his cell phone 
Stone, right by this creepy old mine shaft. On November 20, 2014, no other clues or trails in sight. Now, we're not saying he took a dive down there, but that's as far as we could trace him. We've called in the cavalry from other search squads to keep digging. Kenny's phone just lying there? That's the kind of clue that screams mystery. 6. What happened to Kenny Veach? Kenny decided to hit the trails for yet another day hike, totally ditching his overnight gear, even though he bragged about past 10-hour treks across brutal terrain. But hey, Kenny always played it fast and loose in the desert, ditching the heavy video camera this time around, but not without his trusty photo cam in tow. He'd barely have a hot minute to scout out that elusive M cave if he stumbled upon it again. If you ask me, Kenny was just cruising for a bruising out there without the right gear. 7. The Animal Attack Theory The Mojave is a playground for some real beastly locals. Rattlesnakes, mountain lions, and coyotes. Oh my, Kenny, the guy who'd chuckle while dancing with rattlesnakes, could have stumbled into a face-off with a real predator. But plot twist, no shred of a showdown, not a single clue like remains or a scuffle was ever found. Leaves you wondering, doesn't it? With zilch in the way of evidence, this animal attack theory is hanging by a thread, keeping the mystery of what got Kenny as murky as ever. 8. The message from Kenny's girlfriend. Two years after Veach vanished off the face of the earth, a bombshell dropped right under his M Cave hike video. And who was stirring the pot? None other than his girlfriend, Sherian Pilgrim. She revealed that Veach was crazy about hiking, ghost towns, and old mines, and he sometimes dragged her along on his adventures. Then she dropped the real surprise. She believed Veach hiked out to Sheep Mountain to end it all on his own terms. Word had it that Veach was battling depression had ditched his meds and therapy, and even quit his job the year before he disappeared. He didn't even bring his trusty video camera that fateful November. Pilgrim reported him missing, and a massive search kicked off with over 30 people and a helicopter combing the area. But get this, his car was found parked four hours away from where they thought he might have left his cell phone by a mine shaft, probably to stay off the radar. No other trace of him was found though. Pilgrim's parting advice? Anyone heading to Sheep Mountain, better gear up big time to avoid winding up dehydrated or worse. 9. Veach's Disappearance was featured on the documentary series Real Life Nightmare. CNN's Real Life Nightmare series dropped a gripping episode on November 28, 2021 that had everyone talking. Titled Mojave Mystery Vanished in the Desert, this two-hour thriller dove deep into the mystery of Veach's disappearance. The story thickened as Veach's brother Raymond and his daughter Victoria shared their insights painting a picture of a desert enthusiast who was passionate about exploring and crafting quirky home decor from the treasures he found during his ghost town and mine shaft adventures. And just when it seemed like it was all about arts and crafts, the episode hit you with the harsh realities of desert dangers and hints of Area 51 conspiracies. 10. Another YouTuber on the pack to find Kenny. YouTuber Aquachiga dove into the desert heat on December 9th, 2021, trying to unravel the mystery of Kenny Veach's vanishing. He stumbled upon a creepy stone pillbox that just sat there, overlooking the eerie landscape like some silent sentinel. Then he found these monstrous piles of scat packed with animal bones. Yeah, that was mountain lion territory, folks. This guy also tripped over a badger skull and spotted evidence where a couple of mountain sheep met their gnarly end, one with its leg bone shattered. It made Aquachiga think maybe old Veach met a similar fate out there. Despite combing the the MK Valley in Sheep Mountain and chasing down his gut feelings, Aquachiga is still scratching his head. No sign of Veach, no body, nothing. Just the wild desert keeping its secrets. 11. Illegal Drug Labs While hunting for the elusive vibrating cave near Area 51, Kenny Veach's vanishing act might just tie into some shady dealings. The Mojave Desert, where he disappeared, is a hotspot for the not-so-legal crowd. It's remote, rough, and perfect for those who don't want to be found. Think drug traffickers, and underground lab operators. So, here's Kenny, trekking through these badlands, possibly crashing a party he wasn't invited to. Rumor has it that he might have caught a glimpse of something meant to stay hidden. Given how tight-lipped these desert dwellers are, it's no wonder that all that was left of him was his cell phone by an old mine shaft. Looks like someone wanted to keep the desert's secrets buried deep. 12. Area 51 Gate, Nevada Area 51 isn't just 
some dusty old Air Force spot in the Nevada desert, 83 miles from the neon lights of Vegas. Nope, this place, officially dubbed Groom Lake or Homey Airport, KXTA, is the epicenter of every alien conspiracy you've ever heard. Originally kicked off in 1955 for hush-hush tests like the Lockheed U-2 spy plane, this joint has seen the likes of SR-71 Blackbird and F-117 Nighthawk zipping through its skies. Let's get real. The CIA only coughed up its existence in 2013 after someone poked them with a Freedom of Information Act request. And while the official line is flight testing facility, the whispers around this mysterious chunk of desert range from stashing UFOs and extraterrestrial gadgets to spooky weather control and futuristic propulsion tech. But hey, the US military, they flat out deny the wilder tales sticking to their story. 13. Area 51 Camo Dudes Kenny was chasing after some vibrating cave buzz near Area 51 and bam, he vanished. Cue the Camo Dudes. These aren't your regular mall cops. Decked out in full camo, they patrol Area 51 like it's their backyard, making sure no one pokes around the secret-laden turf. Maybe Kenny was snooping around, and just maybe he got a little too close to something he shouldn't have. Something shiny and definitely off-limits. These camo dudes aren't the type to just shoo you away. They're the muscle-guarding government gold mines. And Kenny, his last check-in, was a stone's throw from Nellis Air Force Base, home to who knows what spooky secrets. Connect the dots. It smells like Kenny might have just stumbled into a heap of classified trouble. Fourteen. Trevor Basil. Trevor Basil, a 43-year-old art teacher from Panaca, Nevada, just up and vanished like a ghost. This rock-hunting aficionado left his home on August 14, 2020, for a routine treasure hunt in the hills south of town. Trevor, always on the lookout for the perfect rock, made this trip loads of times, sometimes even stretching his adventures into the wee hours. Now, three months later, Trevor was still missing. They found his rock bucket shortly after he was reported missing, despite a massive search effort. The guy's description, he's 5 foot 9, tips the scales at 225 pounds, and sports brown hair, blue eyes, and a bit of scruff. We made it to Panaka, Nevada. We've been searching here for a little while. We're walking down these washes. Dogs came up on this. I'm trying to keep it out of the wind for you. But you can see, this is probably a few years old. <clears throat> this is much like a body would be, a human body would be. There'd be a bone scatter, very similar to this. 15. The search for Trevor Basil. Trevor's vanishing act was straight out of a suspense flick. His wheels were abandoned deep in the hills by Miller Wash, a solid 15 miles south of Panica. The drama kicked off on August 15th with over 100 volunteers, helmed by the ever-determined officer Charles Umina hitting the dirt to sniff him out. They latched onto a scent trail, tracking it for seven grueling miles and turning up nothing but a bucket of rocks and a forgotten towel. Despite their best efforts, day one, rap with Trevor, still MIA. Come day two, the search squad decked out with drones, horses, ATVs, and dirt bikes and threw everything they had into the mix. But the scent went cold, and Trevor remained a ghost. By the third day, the sun was beating down hard, causing several to buckle with heat-related injuries after a 12-hour marathon near his last known coordinates. The official search fizzled out, leaving a community on edge and a wife heartbroken. Sheriff Kerry Lee called it quits as temps soared, putting the dogs off their game. Come October, a grateful Dixie Basil tipped her hat to the town for their unwavering support, though the search's Facebook lifeline has since gone dark. Our presumption that there is at least, perhaps one, maybe there's 1% chance that he may have perished out on sheep range. 
16. What happened to Trevor Basil? Basil, totally out of his wits or hurt, might have stumbled a whopping 8 to 10 miles from where he was last spotted. Despite the organized searches and the sharp eyes, the terrain's just too wild. Thick bushes everywhere, even the planes buzzing overhead can't spot a thing. Some folks are whispering about a mountain lion being the culprit, but come on, there's barely a shred of evidence to that. Was it the brutal heat that knocked him off his feet? Fast forward to November 22nd, 20. 2020 and Trevor was still missing. And guess what? He isn't the first rock hunter to vanish into thin air under sketchy circumstances. 17. Forrest Haggerty You wouldn't believe the trek Forrest Haggerty took us on in his YouTube adventures from May and June 2022. He dove deep into the mysterious tale of Trevor Basil, tracking all the crucial spots, even the place where they found what was left of him. If you're thinking of following in those eerie footsteps, Forrest has dropped the exact coordinates in his videos. It was all about getting up close and personal with isolation. Those spots where the German tourists ventured were way off the grid, giving us a real feel of the untouched wild. If you dared to explore those hidden gems, his videos were the guide you needed. 18. German tourists disappeared in Death Valley National Park, California. In July 1996, a crew of German tourists turned their holiday into a horror show in California's Death Valley, one of the planet's its hottest spots. This reckless bunch, Egbert, Georg, Connie, and two little kids vanished into thin air near Anvil Canyon. Their ride, a minivan left behind like a scene from a ghost story. Cut to years later in 2009, two daredevil searchers, Tom Mahood and Les Walker, stumbled upon some chilling remains far off the beaten path. They finally cracked the case of the missing Germans. Turns out they met their doom under the brutal desert sun. Let this be a stark warning. Death Valley doesn't play games with the unprepared. 19. Discovery of the Plymouth Voyager in Anvil Canyon On a blazing hot day back in 1996, Ranger Dave Brenner was up in the sky over Death Valley, eyes peeled for any shady moves. This desert is no joke. It's a scorcher, once hitting a sizzling 134 degree. Stretching over 3,000 square miles, it's got the lowest dip in North America, Badwater Basin, sitting 282 feet below sea level. So, imagine Brenner's shock spotting a plain old minivan cruising Anvil Canyon. Terrain so rough, it's been a no-go for vehicles since 94, thanks to the Desert Protection Act. This place, abandoned by miners since the Panic of 1907 and with no official road since even saw the end of mining with the Billy Mine Borax gig shutting down in 76. Seeing a minivan out there, that's just plain wild. 20. Initial investigations on the case of the German tourists. When the chopper touched down, Brenner scoped out the scene. There it was, a green 96 Plymouth Voyager, looking like it had just taken a dip in desert dust. California plates buried deep in the sand, with three tires busted up like it had been on a cross country trek on rims. That van had a stolen tag slapped on it by the LAPD back on September 10, 1996, after four German tourists snagged it for a road trip and then vanished. We're talking about Egbert Rimkus, his kid Georg Weber, Egbert's girlfriend Cornelia Meyer, and her son Max. They jetted over from Germany on July 8th, landed in Seattle, and then hit Los Angeles, where they picked up this van, aiming to return it by July 26th. Spoiler alert, they didn't. After hitting the California coast, they cruised over to Death Valley. Yeah, the one where thermometers can hit 124 degrees. They had plans to visit Yosemite, but that never happened. The only witnesses, a camera, and some vague plans. By October 22nd, investigator Inman stumbled upon their rolling dust collector in Anvil Canyon. Inside, it was a real mess. Food wrappers, human waste, an untouched six-pack, luggage, toys, you name it. The van got towed the next day. Back in July, that spot had been cooking up to 107 degrees scene by day and a more bearable 79 degrees eve at night. With the scene having been investigated, an initial search for the family was launched two days after finding the van on October 23rd. This search included the China Lake Mountain Rescue Group, nine trackers from the Indian Wells Valley Search and Rescue Group, eight units from the Kern County Sheriff's Mountain Search and Rescue, SAR teams from the Nye County, Nevada, and Inyo County started looking for the family or any clues as to where they might have gone. 
21. The probable itinerary of the crew in Death Valley. This German crew thought they could wing it through Death Valley without spending money on a hotel. After stopping at the DVNP Visitor Center on July 1796, these budget-savvy adventurers decided to pitch their tent in Hanapa Canyon instead of staying at Furnace Creek Ranch in Stovepipe Wells Resort or the Furnace Creek Campground. No traces of them were found at those cushy spots. By July 23rd, a note in the Warm Spring Mine logbook written by Connie, Egbert, Georg, and Max declared they were about to tackle Mengel Pass. That turned out to be a bad call, since that rugged path eats up anything less than a 4WD for breakfast. And guess what? They were driving a Plymouth Voyager minivan. Not exactly a mountain conqueror, right? As expected, they hit boulders and potholes on their way up to Mengeli Pass and had to bail, veering down Anvil Canyon instead. Things went from bad to worse, as that route was a nightmare for a minivan, marking the start of their real disastrous tour. 22. The official search for the group in October 1996. On October 23, 1996, the China Lake Mountain Rescue Group, CLMRG, along with Indian Wells Valley trackers and eight Kern County Sheriff's mounted units, kicked off a search party that had everyone's eyebrows raised. They zeroed in on Anvil Canyon, near Warm Spring Road. The CLMRG squad stumbled upon a Bud Ice beer bottle wedged in the sand, just 1.7 miles east of where they found the minivan and a sizable butt imprint to boot. By day two, the search squad ballooned to include the big shots from Nye and Inyo counties, with two choppers buzzing overhead. They scoured Anvil Canyon and beyond, yet nada. Come October 25th, they were combing through from Anvil to Butte Valley and Mengel Pass. Still zilch. The grand finale on October 26th had 250 folks checking mines and possible escape routes west towards Ballarat. High winds messed with the aerial search big time. With zero leads since that lone beer bottle, hopes plummeted and they called it quits, leaving the mystery of the Germans hanging in the air. 23. Emmett Harder and Dick Hasselman report. Despite countless efforts by rescue teams and folks like Emmett Harder and Dick Hasselman diving into every nook and cranny, those missing Germans are still a big question mark. Harder's spicy tale, Cauldron of Hellfire and the CLMRG peek into mine shafts turned up zilch. The Inyo sheriff threw harder a bone, letting him eyeball some snaps from the German's camera. He pegs a sunset pick to Hanopa Canyon, a cool 17 miles north of Warm Spring Canyon, where their logbook last chirped on July 23rd, hinting they camped there the night before. Then there's Hasselman's twist. Some ATV rider stumbled on two German canteens, just 3.5 miles southeast from where their minivan was parked, snug between Sugarloaf and Needle peak. And get this, three months post-vanishing act, a ranger found a sleeping bag dumped in the middle of nowhere, 18 miles south, down a dirt track to a forgotten microwave relay. Thinking it was trash, he tossed it. Big mistake? Maybe. It could have been from the Germans' ride. Yet here we are, still scratching our heads over this whodunit. 24. What happened to the German tourists? In July 1996. Theories. Those German tourists didn't just vanish into thin air because they got a flat or couldn't have handle the heat. Oh no, there's a heap more to this story, sparking some out there conspiracy theories. Some folks reckon the Germans pulled a Houdini to kickstart a brand new life somewhere exotic like Costa Rica. But seriously, Death Valley as the grand exit. Pull the other one. Another far out theory has Egbert, the ringleader, sneaking off to poke around the China Lake NWC facility, hunting secrets about hybrid propulsion tech. Talk about risky business. Did they get snatched up for a black ops gig or see something so hush-hush that it got them in deep trouble. And then there's the chatter about some desert-dwelling maniac or criminals crossing paths with them. Sounds like a movie script, right? Whatever the truth, the whole thing's wrapped in mystery, with not a single clue to unwrap it for years. First theory is that Egbert was going to disappear and start a new life. Egbert's ex-wife claimed that Egbert was having custody issues with their son, and one of his co-workers said that Egbert had been talking about moving to Costa Rica. But then again, why choose Death Valley? In Cornelia Mayer, Egbert's current girlfriend had a successful business back in Germany. To put it simply, the family was in no position to start a new life. 25. The Tom Mahood Search for the German Tourists In 2009, 
Tom Mahood, a search and rescue fanatic, got hooked on the cold case of some lost German tourists in Death Valley. Imagine this. Mahood dives into this mystery, betting that these tourists bit off more than they could chew following some outdated directions from a museum booklet. They tried to be trailblazers through Butte Valley, but ended up with three busted tires near Mengel Pass. Stranded and desperate, they locked up their van and made a break for it, hoping to find help at the nearby China Lake Naval Weapons Center. Spoiler alert, it didn't end well. They barely made it eight miles out before the harsh desert called time. Fast forward to November 2009, and here comes Mahood with his buddy Les Walker, stumbling upon the remains of Connie Meyer and Egbert Rimkus. This duo didn't just find bones, they closed a 13-year-old mystery that some thought was straight out of a conspiracy theory about the Germans chilling in South America. Their discovery slapped a big reality check on anyone daring to underestimate Death Valley's unforgiving nature. Despite getting the cold shoulder from the authorities, Mahood and Walker's gritty persistence gave some long-awaited peace to the families back in Germany. I, I couldn't believe that we'd actually came upon uh, the remains, try to get into their mind where they would have gone having uh, left their van in this wash in Death Valley and have where they would have gone from there. That wraps up today's video. What do you think happened to the YouTuber after promising to find the mysterious cave? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more intriguing stories coming your way.